benchmarking the Mac Pro trash can, the Mac Pro 6.1, can you still use this Mac Pro from 2013 in 2023? Is it a good idea? And what we're gonna do guys, I'm just quickly jumping onto the desktop with you here. And you see my system is a six core with 3.5 gigahertz and 32 gigs of RAM. I think this is a pretty solid configuration as we're gonna see right now by running the benchmark. In this case, the Geekbench 5 and uploading it to my profile. And as you can see here, we have a pretty good, solid and an even better multi-core score. Of course, it's not as high as Apple Silicon, but in day-to-day -day, day -day use, I found it more than enough to give you the ability to see that all in one glance. I picked four systems that I tested uh, in the past and put them all here, ranked by single core performance. And you see, you have the Mac Pro 2009, which also has a six core, the Mac Pro uh, trash can, a Mac Mini and a Mac Mini with Apple Silicon. And you see, yes, of course, they are getting better. That's partly also due to the improved nanometer process. You know, the Mac Pro 2009, I believe that's uh, 32 nan nanometers. Then the Mac Pro 2013 is 22 and, and so on and so forth. Apple Silicon, I believe is five nanometers. The smaller that gets, the better. However, I can also rank this by multi-core performance. And here we see another picture. The Mac Mini 2018 actually the worst then comes the mac pro from 2019 and then the mac pro from 2013 and only then again are we at the apple silicon and a faster single core score will make it feel snappier as will do a more capable graphics card especially if you do video editing or you want to play the occasional game which you actually can do on on macs uh, a lot of macs there are certain titles. I mean, there's not as big as a selection, but um, if you're interested in that, I will make a video for that as well. Interestingly, the Mac Pro from 2009 has the highest score here. So, but I mean, for day-to-day -day tasks, and I think this is what most people do. Maybe you have, uh, like me, you have the web browser open. Maybe you have uh, X number of tabs open. You're scrolling through here. I mean. I'm doing a screen recording, I have the presentation program open, I have Geekbench open. I mean, these Xeon processors, they really seem to thrive on multitasking applications. And uh, I'm surprised for a 10 year old system, how well this actually performs. I did the, the browser benchmarks and I compared it specifically to my old Mac Pro 4.1, the cheese grater, the beloved, uh, a very nicely upgradable system. However, with Safari, I have noticed it's not as fast as it used to be. And with the Mac Pro 6.1, that is a whopping 61%. Google Chrome, maybe Google Chrome is more optimized for these older systems. Um, it was only 18.7% increase, which brings us right to the next point. How about NVMe's performance since the both the Mac Pro 2009 and 2013, the trash can, both you can upgrade the NVMe's. And I did run some benchmarks on the systems and I came out with around 1.5, I think is also the, the physical limit from the PCI 2 bus. Both the 2013 and the older ones, they only use PCI 2.0, or at least that's how Apple designed it. Also, what you could do is if you wanna buy a used Mac Pro, maybe ask the person who sells it from when the system is. My Mac Pro trash can is from 2018, so it's relatively new. And I noticed this with some other guys doing benchmarks that I saw on YouTube. They had lower values with their um, original stock Apple SSD. So if you buy a system, maybe it makes sense to shoot for a system that's a little bit newer. And another thing that also very interesting for me is to test how, how is the video editing performance? Actually, you can benchmark this. I have like one sample project, which I like to export and see how long does it take to render? How long does it take to render? If I render it to H.264, I mean, you can, you have different render settings in here. I mean, from my testing, ProRes always exports really quick. H.264 may take a bit longer, but it's a more compact file size. But as you can see again here, I'm in the video project and uh, I am 
screen recording and uh, have a bunch of uh, presentation open and uh, the system does it does it do just fine so you tell me if you need a 12 core cpu in that system or uh, it would be a nice upgrade i mean sometimes there are places where you have these plugins you know these these plugins sometimes the plugins are better optimized others maybe such as this they are less optimized so the tend to use more system resources. And again, to illustrate this to you and make it a little bit more imaginable, I took uh, with the stopwatch the export times on different systems. And you see most people probably gonna use just the H264, the dark blue one here to export their content. To me, if it's a seven minute project and it takes about seven minutes to export, it's like almost one to one. Um, keep in mind, I have a full HD workflow. That's totally okay. And you can imagine since uh, if you had, for example, for example, a digital camera, like a lot of these big YouTubers, sometimes they record on external recorders, such as the Blackmagic external recorder or the Atomos external recorder. If they record in ProRes, I would say this system is totally gonna scream because look at the export times in ProRes. And from my actually researching this and reading through the entire Apple ProRes white paper, it's leaving Apple, Apple themselves claim, oh, ProRes is a low complexity codec. It's designed to take full advantage of multi-core processing. Guess why? Here you see the results. The Mac Pro from 2013 apparently exported the ProRes uh, project from me here faster than the Mac Mini. So go figure that one out. And even the 2009 was pretty darn close up so now in conclusion you can benchmark all the way you want um, and do upgrades like the 12 core cpu which is uh, redonkulous in itself but uh, i really feel this system the mac pro 6.1 it works surprisingly well guys uh, considering how old that platform is yes the graphics cards are not perfect and yes you have two of them and they idle and they also consume energy um, the xeon cpu is surprisingly energy efficient but i'm almost uh, jumping to the next video guys where i'm going to test the, the energy efficiency and see how much are the operating costs for these systems if you're living in a country like germany where the electricity prices are rising and rising without any end, end in sight um, that might be an important consideration i see you in the next video let me know what comments you have maybe you want to see something about gaming guys you can game on these systems as well select the titles only but um yeah it works with some uh, restrictions, but it works. Guys, I'll see you in the next video as a subscriber. Bye.